Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of Entrepreneurship Matters. My name is Alicia Wilson. I'm Vice President for Economic Development for Johns Hopkins University and Johns Hopkins Health System. It is my pleasure to host this amazing series this week featuring two amazing entrepreneurs in the hair industry uh, right here in Baltimore for all of you to frequent and to um, get your hair done with. But let me um, set us up. Let me invite Lacey and Yasmin to the screen and set us up for the conversation or I will launch into their bios, their impressive bios. Uh, welcome Yasmin and Lacey, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Um, so we know that successful entrepreneurs, successful businesses are not built in a day. It takes undiluted passion, a lot of grit, multiple failures and a long-term commitment to make it happen. And these two entrepreneurs that we are featuring today are no different. We started this conversation over 60 weeks ago at the urging of a, an amazing young entrepreneur, Camry Moses, I know she's watching, already said hey to her on Facebook um, Live, um, really to uplift uh, our entrepreneurs in our community and really to tell their stories. And so it is an honor really to get to interview Lacey and Yasmin, and you're gonna see why in just a minute. Let me give you their bios so you understand just what giants they are in the hair industry and spa uh, industry, and then we're gonna get right to it. So let me first introduce you to Yasmin Young. She is a master cosmetologist, owner of Diaspora Salon in Baltimore, and a longtime natural hair enthusiast. After relaxing her Kenya doll's hair, I have one of those, at nine years old, she realized then that she wanted a career in cosmetology. Featured in publications such as the New York Times, NBC News, Elle Magazine, and Yahoo Beauty, Beauty, she is dedicated to bringing the beauty and discipline of Black natural hair care to the mainstream. Armed with dedication, passion, and the motto, listen to this, learning never ends. She's excited about her next venture. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit about that, Yasmin. You have to give us a sneak preview. <laughs> um, you can see Yasmin through her work at Diaspora Salon. Um, we'll give you all of her social media handles, but they're very easy, diasporasalon.com, as well as Diaspora Salon on uh, Twitter and Facebook. So welcome, Yasmin, again. So honored to have you on. Thank you for having me. Yes. And the second um, amazing entrepreneur is Lacey Field. Um, Lacey is the owner of the now therapeutic salon and spa. I got that right. I, right. <laughs> with over 18 years of experience, Lacey is the epitome of beauty and fashion. I, I think you can tell. Hair has always been Lacey's first love. She is self-educated by reading countless past and present cultural beauty experiences, which led her to investing in traveling abroad to view and experience the beauty culture herself. Besides traveling the world, she has also been a beauty educator abroad as well. Being an educator, Lacey knows the importance of healthy and educated staff for an either healthy and satisfied clientele. I agree with that. Her number one goal while leading their boutique salon and spa is to create luxury experiences for everyone. I, I, I amen on that. <laughs> With her experience, she is dedicated to bringing more multicultural experiences and to build the Rockville community. Welcome, Lacey, as well, to today's conversation. We have so many people jumping in today, so I can see this is going to be a robust conversation. Let me let folks know, I'll say this at the outset, you can participate in this conversation with Yasmin, Lacey, and me. What you can do is you can put your questions in the chat if you're in Zoom. You can put them on Facebook, which I'm already seeing them coming in on Facebook. You may also um, text them into us, 22333, type J-H-U-W-L in the message, and I will get all those questions and pose them to Yasmin and Lacey. So let me start by asking what inspired you to become an entrepreneur? Like, where did this start? I thought you both, um, Yasmin, you had your nine-year-old Kenya dog, got that perm, and I got the relaxer, and Lacey, you say, always had a love. So Tell us, I'll start with Yasmin, what was, what brought you to becoming an entrepreneur? Okay, what brought me to becoming an entrepreneur? Um, so I would say, uh, first and foremost, I started doing hair um, right after college, right? Uh, I was in my last year of school. I went to UMBC, 
go retrievers. Yeah, go retrievers. Yes. <laughs> so I was in my last semester of school and I said to myself, what what do I want to do? So my major was visual arts, right? Mm -hmm. um, concentration, graphic design. And I realized I love the discipline. You know, I've always been an artist since I was a young child, love the discipline, but I didn't necessarily want that as a career, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I remember I went to my cousin who was my mentor and he said, if you could do something for free for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I said, hair. And he's like, then you need to go do hair. So I said, well, how would I go? In? It's not, it's just not that simple. He's like, it's a process, but do your process. So I started at the bottom, worked my way up. Uh, I was working in uh, salons in Baltimore and I just couldn't find um, what I wanted, what I, what I would want as a customer and then what my customers wanted. So searching here and there. And so I realized I need to create that myself. Mm. So that's what I did. So that's what, um, what inspired me. It was that it wasn't even necessarily that I wanted to own a salon. It was just, I knew what my standard of quality was and I couldn't find that. So it was just like, do I continue to work in a place that's not meeting my standards and my customer standards, mm -hmm. or do I step out on faith, skill, and tenacity mm -hmm. and do it myself. And that's what I chose to do. You, that's a, I mean, it's a very um, great story. And also one that I've, we've heard on this, on yeah. this webinar many times, people saying I was working in someone else's salon. I was trying to figure out where I was going to go. I was working in someone else's business and I realized there was a void in the marketplace yeah. and I was going to fill it. So Beautiful. I know that is many people who are watching. It resonates with them as well. How about you, Lacey? What um, what inspired you to become an entrepreneur? Um, what really inspired me to become an entrepreneur was that I was going to be the first entrepreneur in my family. Mm. Um, you know, taking that risk and jumping directly in to working for myself. You know, I've watched my family. I watched my mom be a hairstylist and work a part-time job, you know, since a very young age. And eventually mm -hmm. she drifted out of doing hair mm -hmm. and watching her when she, when I was younger and learning from her, you know, I always had that true passion of, I want to do this and, you know, having her teach me and wanting to learn and having her, you know, like, okay, I, uh, I taught you once. Now you have to do it on your own. That push right there was always, it, it stays with me throughout mm -hmm. my journey. And I always think about that push of just jumping out there to do something. And um, like Jasmine, I did go to college, but I dropped out. And mm -hmm. I dropped out because my philosophy teacher told me that my opinion didn't matter. And I knew that I always had like a very strong opinion and approach on things differently. And I just couldn't see myself sitting in a classroom with, uh, a person who just didn't believe in my opinion when every opinion matters. So that right there was a true push. Like, you know what, just jump out there, do it. Mm -hmm. I was 17 when I got my first chair and, um, got my license and, um, I, I just knew that it was there, you know, mm -hmm. I, knew I had that feeling to always want to take on that lead of leadership. And, yeah. um, and I can say too, just like Jasmine said, you know, working in different salons with different salon settings, I always had this niche of offering different services. I always had this niche of wanting to provide a space where it was comfortable, where it was luxury, where, you know, people will feel um, eager to come to all of the time and never want to leave. And it pushed me and, you know, we'll get into like the trials and, tri and tribulations, but where I am today, it's almost like a, it was another push just mm -hmm. to move forward in my entrepreneurship and trust the faith and trust God. And um, but overall, I would have to say, if it wasn't for my philosophy teacher to tell me that my opinion was wrong, and if it wasn't for my mother to always push me for more and to challenge myself, I wouldn't be here. No, beautifully said. I mean, I think your your story resonates with a lot of folks in thinking that, you know, sometimes the person that says no, someone that someone, you know, they they would they want to take the fuel out of your tank, but really in in uh, in the reverse is putting fuel in your tank. 
fueling you towards becoming an entrepreneur. So great, great um, just points. And, and what I want to shift to is, so how did you start? So Yasmin, you talked about, you know, your mentor said, do something you would do for free. But of course, you need to get paid. So right. you did said, I'm going to start a business. So what were the steps that you went through to start your business? And then I'm coming to you, Lacey. So you have your chair of support, you're working in someone else's shop, but then you shift. How did you start your business? So Yasmin, how did you do it? And then I'm going to Lacey. Okay. So this is this is the this is a very important part, if not like the first or the second most important part of entrepreneurship, right? Mm -hmm. Is how did you start? So I started, um, so I was working in a salon and at the time I had a friend who owned a salon and it was too much for her. And so she decided I want a business partner. So she asked me to be her partner. So I said, okay, we came in uh, 50, 50 business partners. And after about a year, she's like, I really, I realized that this isn't what I want to do. Like, I love doing hair, but I'm not, I don't want to be a business owner. Mm -hmm. And so she left and I brought her out. And so I had the space to myself and that's how I got started. So I had some money saved up and then I borrowed money from my best friend and my mama. And Thank I God just- for mama's and best friend. For real. <laughs> Um, seriously, seriously so at that point I got um like I said I'm a I'm a very creative person so I outfitted my salon with plants with my artwork um and I just kind of filled the space in as best I could uh mm -hmm. and I just every every bit of profit that I was making I put it right back into the business put it right back into the business and um and I already had a, a, a solid clientele. So, um, so yeah, that, that was it. And then, um, you know, I started taking classes because I wanted to grow the business. I, I didn't just want it to be me. I wanted to understand, um, you know, the whole employee dynamic and the financial dynamic and um, human resources and all those types of things. So that's how I initially got started. Excellent. I've took down notes on what you said, and I've picked out seven things. Okay. Um, like many entrepreneurs, you start in someone else's business, and you learn uh, from that experience. Then you had an amazing opportunity to go and become a business partner, 50-50, and then you shifted. You pivoted because then your business partner, you bought out your business partner and became a sole owner. You talked about your financing that you started with money you borrow, money that you save, your mother, your best friend, really shout out to them uh, for, for supporting you in your, in your development and your growth. Then four, you used your space, so you used your resources to fill out the space that you had. Fifth, you, you, know, you put your profit, so you reinvested the proceeds into your business. Six, you had solid clientele, so you built clientele along the way that allowed for you to have you know we talk about capital in terms of loans yeah. but customers are capital yes, and you are. need capital yeah. uh, and then seventh you took classes so you went and got sort of the infrastructure build out the eat the employee yes. basis your financial all of those are great tips i know folks are taking notes on what you what you just said i just want to lift up i heard seven points of um how you got started that i think are very instructive for everybody watching how about you Lacey? how did you go from you have a chair and then you're going to become the first entrepreneur in your family. So what, walk us through so sort of the process you went through. So my process was, I got my first chair at 17, right? Um, at, I was in Forestville at that time and I just felt complacent. Like I wasn't broadening myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I decided to find a salon to work in part-time because during that time I had extra days that I dedicated to school. Mm -hmm. And so now that I have those days free, what else can I do? So I took those days and I went to Rockville, where I am now, where my business is located, and um, started at Alta. And I worked behind a chair at Alta. They were a very kin salon. And I knew that I was going to get the education there. 
I knew that for a fact that they offered education, I knew that I was going to um, have experience in, you know, extra new, new clientele, you know, new hair that I have never touched new hair that I have never seen. And I, and I wanted that, you know, yeah. I wanted that challenge. You know, I'm, I'm a colorist today, but I started at a very, very low point where I just didn't understand color, but I love color. And um, I knew that I was going to get that skill set there. So working in Alta, I got some skill set and in, like, I only planned on being there for like a year. And um, in six months, with it before six months, my clientele grew rapidly. Before you know mm -hmm. it, I was booked consistently because listening and hearing from hearing from my clientele that are still with me today right i've been in rockville for 14 years and um they're like we heard that a girl from pg was doing hair in rockville so we had to come you know it was a lack of education um in the community out here in rockville the black stylists and uh, with the black clientele as well but then not only that we have other clientele who have curly hair who didn't understand who didn't understand it at that point of time i was the only person doing natural hair naturally curly hair and it wasn't afraid so that put me in a different perspective that put me in a different uh level of growing my clientele and then um two years after that I had the pleasure of going to France for the first time for five days and when I left France and while being in France I said this is where I'm supposed to be I need to come back so I came back from France and I just couldn't stop talking about Paris I couldn't stop talking about just the overall culture in Europe the art and everything that you know just inspired me and I came back home and I saved up for two years and I moved I moved. I told everyone as soon as I got home, I'm moving to France for a few months. I don't know exactly when, but I'm going to let you guys know, but I'm moving to France for a few months. And two years later, I moved to France, well, Europe for three months. And I toured um, London. I, I followed uh, Fashion Week. I knew when to go because everyone was going to be there. So I had you know, that push to actually drive myself in to go to these doors of these designers and say, I'm a stylist from America. Can I join your team today? You know, I just, can I be an assistant? Can I just hold the hairspray? Can I just put on a cape? Like, what can I do? Add a clip. And that's exactly what happened. You know, um, I went from London, wow. I went to Milan, I did Paris, and then I am vacationed from vacation. <laughs> <laughs> vacation from are you saying and, um, like all the favorite places in the world <laughs> <laughs> so um and it's crazy because my networking skills were always i love people i love working with everyone i love meeting i could talk to a stranger we could talk about the shoes we could talk about the sky we're going to have a conversation and um as soon as i got to london you know this is when instagram was really popping off and i made sure that i hit everyone up that matched my that matched me you know mm -hmm. and told them that i was coming and told them what i was coming to do you know to experience and i connected with everyone there my first three weeks there i landed up on a radio station i think my within my first month i got a spread in a magazine um and on top of that you know following fashion week so while there in Europe, that's when my inspiration really came about as far as like being a salon owner, being, um, you know, just cultivating the, the, the industry, you know, making sure that how it blends and all of those things. And I came back home and I started Miss Healthy Hair LLC. That was the, that was the kickoff my, to start my first business. I knew that I set myself apart as a stylist. I knew healthy hair was the only thing that mattered to me. I love telling clients no, you know, if, if it doesn't match up to what their needs should be what they're to match what their wants um what their wants are and i started miss healthy hair and we kicked off the website we had a fashion show we had a you know we did all of that and i brought all of my visions back from europe and everybody was like what happened like you're just completely different type of stylist you know i started off as a model you know walking the runways moving sh shiftly you know shifting myself to behind the scenes like creating more and um and it took me years to get where I am today. Like I said, I always wanted to open up a salon and I worked in countless of salons and um, I worked in three salons before I actually owned my own. And mm -hmm. um, last, what, 2019, I was actually working on a project to open up to buy our building that didn't go through, COVID happened. And um, before then, the salon owner here um, at Salon, the, it was called Salon Fusion at that time. She pulled me to the side and she said, you know, I'm going to sell the salon. And I'm like, hmm, okay, why is she telling me that she knows that I'm working on a different project? I had planned on just being in PG County for, you know, the rest of my career, starting our business there. And when 
when I talk to my business partners, which Yasmin is so, she hit the nail on the spot. Your friends are your best business partners. Your friends are your first capital. Um, I have one friend who was a long-term client of mine who always believed in me. The first day she sat in my chair, she said, I want to invest in you. Um, then my very best friend, she has, she's always been my model first, you know, like, I want to try this. Can I do, can I use just you for this? Can you do this for me? She's always been there for me, my very best friend. And uh, we have a third partner, which is my, um, my client's wife. And she always believed in me since the very first day that she met me. She said, you're going places and I want to invest in you. So together we went from purchasing a building that didn't happen to the salon owner coming to me and saying, telling me that she wanted to sell the business, me leaving that day and saying, you know what? I want to buy it. And we had a meeting and we set the numbers and that's how we landed up here. Therapy Teak is now in Rockville, Maryland. Excellent. Amazing journey. Uh, we've seen in the comments, people are just uh, shouting both of you out about your journeys. And I'm going to give y'all names too, so y'all can give them discounts when they come back. <laughs> they already giving y'all names. Um, so hold on. First, let me get a couple of things. First, you got your first chair when you were, I took down 10, 10 notes for you. First, you got your first chair. So you were really learning your craft. Then you took a part-time job in a salon that was going to allow for you to expand your education. And so really took that time to understand how to do different types of hair. Like um, Yasmin, you built that clientele throughout um, and really went and took um, all of your, took, you know, you talked about faith and your, in your prayers and took them down to Rockville and really expanded your um your clientele then uh, you saved up went to france i give you huge kudos you you uh, clearly are um fearless uh in that um when when you got there really honed your skill and still expressed that hunger to really understand the inner workings seventh you um you harness that when you were over there, really harness social media. I think people who got on the ground floor, they won the most. Um, then you worked in three salons and then moved over to use funds like the friends and family. Yes, and y'all both have great friends that were your first round of capital for your businesses and then launched in. Great nuggets for everyone watching. Let me give you a couple of shout outs that are already coming in. We have um, so many people just lifting you all up. I, uh, Brandy Maxwell, she deserves a um, nice discount, um, Yasmin. She talked about how amazing of a stylist you are, and, um, <laughs> a woman. <laughs> so it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely there. We have uh, Kev talking about how inspiring you are, Lacey, um, all your journey. So um, y'all are getting those shout outs. I just want to give Thank you a couple you. as we started. Let me ask you this, which is coming in a couple times different times. Uh, ways in the conversation is the pivots. And both of you talked about pivots in your career. Yasmin, you are an amazing retriever. So graphic design background, but you pivoted. Um, and was that challenging for you? And Lacey, you pivoted a couple of times, right? Went to France, came back, went from being a... So how did, were those challenging for you? And what were the things that helped you get through that that transition point how did you get over sort of what stops a lot of people from getting past that and breaking through so Yasmin what was what was critical for you at that time um what was critical for me at that time honestly was personal fulfillment mm -hmm. uh so I <laughs> so with with the pivot and it was also the ability for me to pay my bills um, those were the, the two biggest things. Um, so for me, I think that my, when you're passionate about something, at least I can speak for myself. I, I just don't stop. I'm very persistent. So whether, uh, if I set my mind, Hey, I want to be a hairstylist, no matter what I was going to do it, you know, um, when I first, so just a, a quick segue in the state of Maryland, um, like a lot of states, you don't have to have a license to work with natural hair or to braid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's how I started. I first started as a natural hairstylist. I didn't use heat. I didn't use scissors. I didn't use color. I just styled hair. 
right? So when I realized um, that I could do that, I mean, anybody could kind of do that and get a chair. Um, I kind of wanted more, right? Mm -hmm. And so while I owned the salon uh, three days a week, um, I went to DC. I got a full scholarship to uh, the Aveda Institute, right? Um, I graduated first in my class, was the first one to get my license. So four days out of the week, I literally did this for a year, three to four days out of the week, I worked. And then three days out of the week, I went to school in DC mm -hmm. full time, right? So it was that drive that I had that caught that kind of just made the pivot make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's kind of like as an entrepreneur, you just you can't be timid with things, right? You got to go for the gusto. I always tell people, why be a monkey when you can be a gorilla? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so for me, um, once I figured out, hey, I want to do hair, um, I was going to be the best at what I did. And so, you know, I researched and um, practiced, got models, all that stuff. And that was able to support my pivot. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a really, really great and inspiring to hear about you going to school. Hustlin actually was talking to a mentee this morning who's working, going to school, pursuing her dreams. And, you know, that drive, like I told you, that drive is going to take you so far. And you just testified to that. But somebody listening, I know we have a, um, a couple of pe people on, actually one that put a, a question to us about, you know, is it ever too late to go to school? I'd like to finish my degree, but I'm not, you know, I fear I might have missed the window, missed the boat. And I think you just spoke life over her or him who, who's watching and trying to figure out you can start again. You can do, you can do that. I think Jasmine just spoke so eloquently to that about how she had a degree and she said, I'm going, I'm going to go at back and get more. Um, to allow for me to elevate my game. Just so inspiring what you just said, Yasmin. Um, Can I also say something else? Oh, to, yeah, please. To the person that uh, made mention of should they go back to school, I'll say this, right? Um, and I hope this is appropriate to say, number one, school costs money. We don't have any rules. We don't have any okay. rules. <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, number one, school costs money, right? Uh, for me, when, when I got accepted into the Aveda Institute, I had to do a competition um, to, get the, uh, to get the scholarship to go to school because I spent so much on my undergrad degree. I was just like, I don't want any more student loans. They told me what the assignment was um, and I was determined like, okay, I'm going to win this and I won, mm -hmm. right? So for me, even if I had to pay for it, it made sense because it was directly tied into what I wanted to do. It was an investment for me to further my career, right? Because as a natural hairstylist, I couldn't do the things my customers wanted. So my customers needed to get their hair trimmed and I had to send them elsewhere, right? My customers needed to have their hair colored. I had to send them elsewhere. So for me, going to cosmetology school, even if I pay for it, right, it was an investment. So I would say if no matter what your age is, if it is an investment into what you want to do um, and you can clear that investment and that investment makes sense, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's just so, an extremely helpful point that you just made about the investment. It's an investment in return. In right. Return, like, yeah. I love basket weaving, but like I'm not about to go get a master's in basket weaving because I love it. It got to no, make sense. No, 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 no. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, Lacey, how about you? How, what allowed for you? What were, what was going on? What was critical for you to allow for you to pivot? Um, and you talked about going to France and then coming back, starting your salon with three people, like your, your customer's wife. And I mean, you just, you, you've done that. So what was allowing for you to do that? Um, what was critical for you to have at that time? Um, I think definitely because as an entrepreneur, you, you have to balance your finances, you know, mm -hmm. for your personal and your business. And I was always the one to make sure that the business was taken care of. Right. 
Mm-hmm. I was always the one to make sure that my business account looked good. So I, because I know that when it's time to need a loan, I, they need to know that I make the money. I know I need mm-hmm. to pay my taxes. I know all of those things. What I didn't um, know that was coming my way was taxes, you know, and I mm-hmm. learned at a very young age and I'm, ex- I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy that I've learned this, but when I was working as an assistant, I was getting claimed on taxes and didn't know. So here it is. I started my business and, you know, all of these things are coming out. So now I owe taxes. Oh my God, IRS. And everybody's afraid of IRS. So at that point, I knew for a fact that I needed to make sure that financially I was always going to be set, right? Mm -hmm. Financially, I was always going to be, you know, I was going to look at finances differently. Um, I was going to learn about finances and I was going to learn about IRS as well. (laughs) But what, um, what really, really gave me that pivot was to always accept change. I think a lot of people don't really know the real definition of what change is. And in entrepreneurship, change happens every day. You don't yeah. know. You know, you're, you're, you're really playing a risky game and you're taking that risk all on you and what you're pouring into the business. And I knew for a fact that I had to pour everything into my business, you know, especially since I did start at a young age, nothing mattered more. Nothing yeah. more but experiences and business, you know, like to travel. I love to travel. I want to see the world, but I also want to worry about my business. And um, that was, I was just, I was summing up to just change. And I talk about change all of the time, especially with times that we are in right now, you know, where we didn't expect any of this to happen. And we didn't expect it to really hurt the beauty industry because nothing harms us, you know? So yeah, with when we make it throughout anything, one thing for certain, a woman is going to get her hair done. You know, a man is going to get his hair cut. And mm-hmm. for a couple of it to really shift our business, I really had to make sure now to today that I always have a changing plan and not stick to the plan that I may have planned five years ago, but make that changing plan happen every six months or every four months, every quarter, because every quarter is different. And, um, with learning that along the way, um, even in my younger days where starting this healthy hair and having to hire employees and having to hire an assistant and needing help, that was always a pivot change for me too, is to make sure that I ask for help. You know, um, we can never do anything alone. And yeah. that was never a hard thing for me. Like if I needed yeah. something, I'm going to ask for it. And to this day, if I need something from the bank or if I need a grant or whatever the case may be, I have to ask for it. And um, just making sure that each contact matters. You know, you when you meet people, you know, to tell those people who you are and what your plans are. So then you have set boundaries. I think also in entrepreneurship, we don't set boundaries. A lot of people don't know what boundaries are, but it's a culture that you have to hold on to for yourself to really define your successful points. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you, you made a couple of really great points, which I want to I want to um, not let go, which were really about how you thought about COVID and the pandemic and the adjustments. And um, guys, I'm going to start with you and, and, and go to Lacey about how did the pandemic impact you and how did you, <laughs> what adjustments did you have to make and if you could tie that into like a real discussion about your clientele, because we have a number, I see a number of entrepreneurs on here who were thinking about that clientele during that period of time, still now. So how did you retain and grow and continue during, during COVID? Yasmin? Sure. So for us, uh, we closed, we were closed for like three full months, right? So we, uh, we had a ton of appointments on our book. So we just, um, at the <laughs> at first we kept rescheduling people because we thought, oh, we're going to be closed for two weeks. So we're like, we'll reschedule. <laughs> we're like, I want my appointment. So, cause we have clients, we have, at the time we had clients who came in like once a week, they didn't have shampoo at home, you know, completely dependent on us. They're like, I want that I wanted that appointment in two weeks. So we're like, sure. Then it was like, okay, so two more weeks. And eventually, you know, we just had to, um, to completely close our book. But uh, luckily with um, 
with the amount of knowledge that I had um, outside of being a hairdresser, right? Mm -hmm. Just that, that business acumen that I've picked up over the years and the just the information that I had, um, we, we closed and we were fine, mm-hmm. right? So I was like, you know, we, we have reserves. I mean, we're, we're, we're good. Uh, so we were able to apply for um, the loans that were available, the grants that were available from the state. And we were, we were completely fine. We were closed for three months. Um, when we reopened, we literally had, um, we had to do the spreadsheet and we literally had, it was like 430 appointment requests. It was ridiculous but because we also, during that time, um, that's when I was in the New York Times. I was, uh, I did the BBC, Reuters, uh, Washington Post, NBC News. Um, and Say that then- number again, how many? 432. Wow. Woo. Appointment request. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so, you know, I'm even, <laughs> a couple, I'm, couple of the <laughs> overwhelmed, um, thinking about it, but you know, y'all are thinking about it now based off of what I said, but imagine having an Excel spreadsheet with 432 names. I know. My and, heart just, my heart just went pitter patter. No, right. like, that's not, yeah. You know, where, where am I putting, where am I putting 60 people? You know, yeah. it was, it was bananas. We were like seven days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. And it was a lot of that wasn't just behind the chair. It was administrative stuff. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, and then, uh, a week before we opened, I was like, I want to repaint the walls. So like, then I was like, I want to, um, like renovate so we- <laughs> oh, oh i see what you're doing you're like you're like the channel i i know i i, I know. it was crazy but so anyway we um so i think us just like so many so many businesses had to pivot and i'm just grateful that i had my ducks in a row i had my stuff in order so that uh for example when um uh, Governor Hogan is like, you know, we're opening this for small businesses. We're opening that. Boop! I can go right to QuickBooks, yeah. pull all my financial statements. Yeah. Right? There are yeah. so many, especially black-owned businesses that don't even like they don't even know what a profit and loss statement is. You know, so I would definitely say to you guys that are listening and you're interested in entrepreneurship, um, you finances are key finances are key. you gotta you gotta know your numbers you gotta have that kind of stuff in order um so for us we we were absolutely fine um in fact i was like i want another month off because i had painted all the walls in my house <laughs> i was we were ha- i was like look i'm watching netflix i'm chilling yeah so <laughs> Right. So you, I'm definitely, I'm so thankful that, that my business was okay. And I definitely like had a moment, um, for the businesses that weren't able to make it. Um, yeah. 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 I think you made some really great points. One of them being, and we've heard entrepreneurs say this over and over again, that having their finances in order before COVID hit, Mm-hmm. was so critically important because if your finances weren't in order, you weren't paying taxes, you weren't doing all those things, PPP, all those grants, all those loans were barred to you. So I agree. So wholeheartedly, just great gem you just dropped on folks. How about you, Lacey? How did you pivot or, or deal with um, COVID and I, I know, I mean, your clientele is, is huge yes. and your following <laughs> is significant. So how did you, how did you fare? Um, well, so COVID hit us in March. I was not the salon owner yet. We didn't. We oh, okay. That's right. You said that. Yeah. You know, of COVID. So we purchased the salon in September of last oh, year. Oh, so you do hard too. You do hard just like yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, go hard for the paint. <laughs> Literally. Go hard in the paint. Okay. All right. So um, so in March, it was solely myself. However, that's I still took a loss. You know, yeah. we um 
I was working with the bank and SBA and we were purchasing the building. We took that loss. I lost, we, the, we personally lost about $30,000, honestly. Thankfully, just like Yasmin said, you know, what you want to do, you want to make sure that you have reserves. You want to make sure that you have savings. A lot of entrepreneurs just want to take the benefit of, oh, I make this much money. Oh, I can make this and I can buy this and I have that. No. What does your business do? Can your business survive? And can you also survive without your business? So that savings, that personal savings definitely helped me. Um, although I went straight through it, thank God for my accountant, because I have one, thank God for my financial advisor, because I have one, and I think that we all need to learn how to have these relationships in place, so, because they can help us, you know, when you have an accountant, and you have a financial advisor, they're giving you advice on how to work your money, and how to live, and what if something was to happen, you know, like, for an example, being a stylist, and having insurance on my legs, and my hands, if I broke a hand tomorrow, guess what, I still can get paid for the such a key so important beautiful gem you just yeah, dropped so yeah important. and um so i did have personal savings and i did have business savings even though we took a loss we were still able to move forward with our business and i did take a um i did go i, I was able as a sole entrepreneur able to tap into the ppps and the grants and everything because my numbers were in place i had i never played i look i learned at a young age to not play with irs so i had everything placed in place I knew that i needed to pay quarterly or i needed to pay yearly i knew that these things had to be in place at all times so i was able to survive at home and our business was still able to strive um I did do a little hair during COVID. I'm not going to lie because my clients are just that needy and I love them. <laughs> so I'm nice, nice. calls, you know, yeah. um, and I was connecting with them weekly. So I would have weekly Zoom calls with my clients, connecting with them. I would put, um, put packages together for them. I would uh, coach them on how to shampoo their hair, how to blow dry, what to do. And then the benefit of being, um, to making units and making wigs and owning a hair company. So I had hair on, you know, all the time. They didn't have to go find it. I didn't have to find it for them. We, I created units for pretty much 75% of my clientele because they were working, they're working class women and yeah. they needed to look a certain way on the cameras and they couldn't, you know? So what we would do is we would all meet up in one location. They would drop their units off to me. I would prepare them and have them back to them before Monday for the next two weeks. And that's what we did. And that's how I survived. That is so beautiful. And thank God for both of y'all. Because I'm telling you, when COVID hit, I don't know, my head, I mean, I don't have my head done. My head, everybody knows it's not good. It's, it's horrible. Everybody, it's no no peace in the house if my head is not done. So, um, uh, and we have a couple of people said, um, Yasmin, they were wearing head scarves. They said they, 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 they suffered through, but they, they got through. A couple of people said that you, uh, it was, they survived wearing heavy wraps. That's what they said. And then Lacey, Lacey, they giving you shout outs to um that you you hooking them hooking them up during the um during um during while they were doing that. We have a couple of young people on and just want to say I'm so glad to see so many college students on and high school students and um they've been asking a number of different questions. I'm gonna try to weave them into one question, y'all, which I hope um, Yasmin and Lacey can do. We're, we're going to go on a tour. We're going to see some of their products as well. I want to make sure we leave time for that. But they want to um, talk. One, are there any tips that you would give to them as young entrepreneurs? They're college students, high school students thinking about that. And then uh, another question weaved into that was, how can I learn more about taxes and these things that you all are talking about as an 18-year-old? Um, you know, somebody that wants to, where, where did, where did you go? Where do you, where, what do you recommend after they leave this webinar? Where should they pick up their education uh, about being a business owner? So yeah, I'll start with you and then Lacey, tips for the, the young people on watching. So, um, so I would, I can uh, speak from my experience so as a young person um, that is interested in entrepreneurship, for me, the way I learned was YouTube, right? I'm a millennial, so YouTube is um, <laughs> online. It's like an encyclopedia. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm so, like but I was, I was intentional about 
who I would listen to, right? So mm-hmm. um, I would find people that were CPAs because even though they weren't specifically giving me advice, they have a license. Yes. And, um, you know, so the information that I saw uh, from YouTube, it would, when I would listen to different people, I had like three specific people that I would listen to. And the information was the same. They just taught it in different ways. That's how I learned, um, especially about the financial part. Uh, I mean, it would be easier if I knew the, um, the industry they wanted to be in. So I would say YouTube. And then there are, uh, every county has, uh, I know in Maryland, every county has like a small business development center. Um, so early, oh, I just put that in the chat. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I went through the small business development center, um, in Baltimore city. And then, uh, there's another one that's tied with the university of Maryland. Uh, I, I did some work with them. Um, and then what else, uh, then, uh, there's a program called score, uh, score that's has amazing. Yep, score has mentors. Um, but I would, I would recommend honestly going to social media, going to YouTube and, um, and typing in like, how do I open an ice cream shop or how do I open, uh, a hair salon? How do I open, um, you know, a, a grocery store and hearing from people who have actually done it, you know, um, how do I, I think that that's also important is to get advice from people who have done it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and guess what? Jennifer Fun, regional director of the Small Business Development Center is watching. So you know what? You know what, um, Jen, we, we're going to have to have a whole workshop on this. We've had young people ask this question a couple of times. I think the young people, as well as the budding entrepreneurs, they deserve a webinar on this. So don't worry, the team probably is fringing behind the wall. <laughs> we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a workshop on this. We're gonna, we're gonna bring the people what they want and what they need. That would be so good because for just like Lacey, right? I'm I'm like the first person in my family to own a brick and mortar small business, right? So this ain't my side hustle. This is yeah. like, this is what I do, right? Yeah. So I think like, as I became an entrepreneur, I, I learned to nurture myself and to, to grow myself. But as kids, if we could nurture children, especially I agree. I agree. To, to be entrepreneurs and, and plant those seeds in them that are needed, like be smart with your money, you know, uh, always think about customer service, knowing like key performance indicators at a young age and and just like putting those seeds in them, um, leadership, structure, all that stuff, time management, man, it, I mean, I, for me, I would have, I would have, if I knew that coming in, I mean, I'm happy with where I am, but I know I'd be further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I think you, I mean, you're so yeah. right. And I, I mean, I, um, I've seen that question come up a couple of times, but I'm, we're gonna make that workshop happen. So don't worry, um, yeah. young people. We're gonna make that we're gonna make that happen for you all. You've been watching and supporting and supporting these entrepreneurs, but we're gonna make that happen for you all so you can sort of demystify those things. How about you, Lacey? What what um, what advice do you have for the young people that are watching? Definitely everything that Yasmin hit was perfect. You know, um, I I say this all the time and we say this a lot too. Find a mentor. You know, find a mentor and really believe in utilizing the mentor and let them teach you and and learning from them, you know, and the things that you really want to do. Match with someone, find someone, go on social media and go into their direct messages and say, hey, I need a mentor and I feel like you'll be perfect for me to mentor me. You know, it's certain things that you need to develop yourself, especially as a business owner. And if you don't find a good connecting person, then you won't learn those things that you need to learn, just like customer service or leadership and structure, you know, um, 
And for me, my mentor was a blessing, you know, like she's, I call her my mother, my second mother, my hair mother. And she has stuck um, beside me since the very beginning and she does not leave my side, you know? And I know for a fact that I can always go to her. And just like um, uh, Yasmin said that you could go on to Maryland, you could find these uh, different, uh, these different articles, reading is fundamental. Reading never gets old. It's always in the book. And they always say, we hear this a lot too. You won't know unless you read it. If you don't read it, you will never learn. You know, and uh, for me, even, even for the taxes, the best way to learn about taxes is IRS. They're feeding you the direct information. Go on irs.gov and read every single article that they have. They're going to tell you what to do. They're going to tell you how to do it and why you need to do it. And that's the best way to learn from the person who's going to charge you for your taxes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay, a couple of things. I want, we got a lot to accomplish in these last 10 minutes. I have gotten too much in. I mean, I, this, has been a one, this has been one of the best conversations we have had on here. And I just thank you, Yasmin and Lacey, for making that happen. <laughs> it's because of you all. I want to get your products in. I have Oprah watching and a bunch of investors wanting to know how they can support businesses like yours. And we got and we have to do a tour. So we're going to get all of those things done. Let me make sure we get folks to understand how they can get in contact with you and how they can support you. So Yasmin, give us your dot coms. We put them in the chat. We put them on Facebook. But Yasmin, for those who are listening on the phone, how can they get in contact with you? So um, we are, we're on all social media under Diaspora Salon. Uh, and then if you want to get in contact with me directly, you can email me um, my email address. Uh, so my name is Yasmin Young, two Y's. So it's yy at diasporasalon.com. Excellent, excellent. Lacey, how can folks get in contact with you? Um, definitely, I always say just Google, you know, Google us and all of our information pops up there, Petite Salon and Spa, and um, our direct email is info at therapeuticesalonspa.com, and everything will come directly to me, and I look forward to meeting everybody. Excellent. Let me get this Oprah question in. Oprah's watching. A bunch of investors are watching. Give us like one sentence. What can they do to support businesses like yours to thrive in our community and to continue to grow? So Yasmin, what's what's the word for Oprah on this? this uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, one thing that uh, Oprah and her investors can do to support businesses like mine is, uh, I would say to showcase us. Mm -hmm. um, I would say to showcase us and, um, invest money in initiatives that uh, we hold to our heart. So for me, it is, I am directly tied to the idea of black women wearing their hair the way it comes out of their heads, right? That's not everybody's ministry, that's cool. That's what is important to me because that has been my experience and I know what that experience looked like. And I see that same thing coming from my customers. It is a journey and it is, it's a very important thing for a black woman to go through the process of being natural. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, to support us in the initiatives that are important to us and that will ultimately uh, build up our communities. Excellent, excellent. Lacey, your word for Oprah. My word for Oprah and the investors would definitely be just to, like Yasmin said, said showcase our business and what the culture is of our business um, to allow people to actually visually see us, you know, um, sharing our stories, sharing our upbringings and where we, where we started from to where we're going and um, also open up avenues of franchising. You know, one of my definite dreams for our business, for our salon company is a franchising business here in the States and international along with education, you know, um, being a master stylist and having the, you know, expertise and having the experience, one of my very passionate, my very passionate desired things to do is to open up an advanced academy to help other stylists out, especially stylists who aren't, who graduates get their license and still really don't understand the epitome of hair. And, um, and that's what, that's what they can do for us. That's how I think they can help us out. 
I love it. I love it. Let me get, let me give you both the opportunity. Showcase your product. So Yasmin, you have a couple of things to show us. Sure. Um, so these are your products? No, these are not my products. But what, um, so. But you sell them. Can we yeah, buy we, them from you? Yeah. So we, we, we retail everything that we use in our salon and education is huge. Um, yeah. client that comes in, we, we tell them what we're doing. We tell them why we're doing it. We show them what we use. And then uh, we give them instructions on how to achieve the same results at home. So um, I'll, I have a whole bunch of, you know, shampoos, conditioners, styling, but I mean, unless you have the context for what they are and what they do, they're not that important. So one thing that I do have um, that is really important to me uh, is actually this. <laughs> it's a shampoo brush, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important to me because um, this is a tool that, uh, that we as Black women use to detangle our hair, right? So it's important because of uh, the way that it was created, the roundness of the teeth on the end mean that it's not gonna rip through our hair. But for me, it's important because detangling my hair was the first thing that I was able to do as a child when I did my hair, right? So my mom was also a hairstylist. And so I remember the, the, the way she instructed me on how to detangle my hair was to start at the bottom and work your way up. And so I encourage everybody, if you are interested in entrepreneurship, just like I did, just like Lacey did, start at the bottom and work your way up. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> oh, you, you dropped. Oh, that was nice. That was, that was, I love that. That was nice. That was good. That was really good. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> How are you? Uh, Lacey, that was good. I'm going to use that. I'm, I'm using that. I love I'm using that. it in a speech. If you hear it again, I'm going to give Yasmin credit. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Lacey, you have some, a couple things behind you for us, right? I do. So one product is our scalp scrub. This is a scalp scrub that helps exfoliate um, the scalp because scalp is skin. And it also helps with psoriasis and dermatitis. This is a partnership that I actually have with a natural company called 803 Natural. And we created it because we, we see a lot of dandruff. We see a lot of scalp issues in the salon. And I'm tired of seeing people use combs to comb up their dandruff. And, you know, it's really, really, it's messing people's hair and their scalp up. It's damaging it. And our scalp scrub actually helps um, to remove all debris, uh, dandruff, heals, psoriasis, and it's all natural. And then behind me, I have our t-shirt for Black Girls Rockville. So uh, when I first started here in, um, in Rockville, I really didn't tap into the, the, the community here until I brought the business. Yes, I'm late, right? But it's always a time period for everything. So I created Black Girls Rockville as our in-house nonprofit, um, which will help build the community, not just for Black girls, but for girls everywhere. Um, because I noticed that it was lacking. You know, I noticed that they kind of just were separated. So our nonprofit is to help rebuild um, our community here in Rockville. I love it. Love it. Love it. And you, you're going to show us the shop, right? Oh, yes. Yes, come on the tour. All right, she's going to, don't worry, don't get dizzy, y'all. She's going to show us to take us on tour. <laughs> so we're going to start here. So this is our um, greeting area, the opening of the salon. All of our products are displayed the products. And then we're going to turn the corner. That, that's Christina. Hi, <laughs> <And> Carla. <laughs> we are a multicultural company, salon company. So we see everyone. And no one can leave until they are beautiful. This is our shampoo area where all of the magic happens. And this is our salon floor with our stylist. Oh, wow. Yes, so we have Tiana, Jesse, Bruno. Did Bruno want to wave? No, ah, Bruno's the man of the house. He's the, the only man male. of the house. He's I, the man I of the house. It, I the love only it. male stylist that we have. This is where all the color magic happens in our color room. And then we also offer like spa services. We have massaging and skin services. So this is like our massage room here. That's our massage room. She is amazing. Uh, she knows the body and you know, she can definitely help with everything. And then this is our esthetician room here. 
Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. this is where everything, all of the magic happens at Therapy Tweaks and Wellness Spa. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Lacey. And yes, we, we were going to visit Yasmin Salon. She has a, a client that um, we want to respect their privacy, but we're going to we're going to come back and see your salon too, Yasmin. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to do a recap so we can come and see you as well. That is beautiful, Lacey. Gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, Congratulations. Thank Let you me so just much. We're remodeling it. soon, and I'm so happy. But then we actually uh, this is, we'll have to do a <laughs> we'll we'll recap when you do. Let me just say this. It has been a blessing to have both of you on. Thank you, thank you, thank you for appearing on Entrepreneurship Matters this week. And I just pray both of you have continued success. And as all of you can see, we need to support these amazing entrepreneurs' um, support, but we also need to purchase because they're not just because they're great people, but because they're good and they're great at what they do. And so please Please support them. Let me get, let me close this out and then we'll be all set. We will return next week. This is all about restaurants. We're going to be um, featuring Kaya Yalkin of Fishnet and Chef Jasmine Norton of the Urban Oyster. Don't miss this. It's going to be a tasty entrepreneurship matters. Follow us on JH Connects on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Email feedback to JH Connects at jhu.edu. I want to thank our partners, Johns Hopkins University, Johns Hopkins Health System, Hopkins Local, the Mayor's Office of Small Minority Owned Businesses, uh, the Warnock Foundation, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses, and Bloomberg Philanthropies. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>